Hello, in this video we're going to go over this problem from IMO 2018. This is a short list of problem and this is number A1. Uh, so the question is asking us to find all functions satisfying this certain um, functional equation. It's functions from positive rational numbers to positive rational numbers satisfying f of x squared, f of y squared is equal to f of x squared times f of y. At this point you may want to pause the video think about this problem and then come back and watch the rest of the video to see how I solve this problem and what is the thought process behind solving this problem. Okay, so the first thing that I do is I will start with uh, looking at uh, what are the uh, what are functions that I can actually guess that these are the solutions to this the, uh, to this uh, functional equation. So the first thing is if you take f of x equals a constant you will get c equals c cubed which is going to give us c equals 1 because we are in positive rationals. Okay so c equals 1 f of x equals 1 is a solution and if you try linear if you try quadratic it doesn't seem like any of those would work because there is a um, uh, there's a, it's really not balanced. There's an issue with the degree of the two sides. The degree of the left side is much larger than the degree of the right side. So that would be, that would cause issues if you look at any other thing, any other polynomial other than constant polynomials. Um, so uh, at this point I suspected that perhaps the only solutions are f of x equals 1. Now what I notice is I can sort of turn the left side into something symmetric. If I replace x by f of x, I will get this, which is symmetric on the left. And on the right, I would get something that is actually not symmetric. So what does that mean? It means um, if I swap x and y, these two things would have to be the same. Because if I swap x and y, I would get f of y squared, f of x squared on the left. And on the right, I would get f of f of y squared times f of x. Which means these two must be the same. Because f of f of x squared, f of y squared is the same as f of f of y squared times f of x squared. So what does that give us? It tells us that f of f of x all squared times f of y is equal to f of f of y all squared times f of x which means the ratio of f of f of x squared and f of x is in fact a constant because for every x and y these two ratios are the same this is true for every x and y in positive rationals so what does that mean it means this quantity is in fact a constant so I can say f of f of x squared is equal to c f of x. Now, assuming that the answer that we found is in fact the only possible function, which is not something that we are sure at this point, then we know that if I substitute uh, f of x equals 1, I know that this would have to be 1, this would have to be 1, so therefore c would have to be 1. So the question now becomes, can we show c equals 1? So first thing that I did was, okay, so what if I do show that c equals 1? So if I show that c equals 1, what can I get? I can get f of x equals f of f of x squared, which is a perfect square. And this is nice because I'm actually using the fact that uh, we are doing, we are dealing with uh, positive rationals. Because if I had um, real numbers, then perfect squares wouldn't really mean a whole lot. But in rationals, perfect squares do mean, do mean something because we can do prime factorization over rationals. Okay, so this is something that is useful. The other thing is if I can show that c is equal to 1, or in other words, if I can show that f of 1 equals 1, which would imply c equals 1, then what would I get? I would get f of, I'm going to substitute y by 1, I would get f of x squared, f of 1 squared equals, so I'm just substituting y by 1 in the original functional equation, I would get f of x squared times f of 1. So if f of 1 is 1, then I would get f of x squared equals f of x squared. So 
Now, I know that f of x is a perfect square. So now, if I take this guy, I will get f of x equals f of f of x squared. Now, I know that f of x squared is f of x squared. Because f of x is a perfect square, I can write it down as the square root of f of x, and then put this square here, and then square that. So that means it is f of root f of x to the power of 4. So what does that mean? It means f of x is a perfect uh, fourth power. Now, if f of x is a perfect fourth power, I can kind of repeat the same argument. I can write it down as f of fourth power of f of x raised to the power of 4 and then square. Because f of x squared is f of x squared, I can just do that twice and I will get f of fourth root of f of x to the power of 8, which means f of x is a perfect eighth power. Okay, so this is nice, which basically tells us that f of x would have to be 1. Because if you have a rational number, look at the prime factorization of the rational number, p1 to the alpha 1 all the way to pk to the power of alpha, alpha k. And these alpha j's are, uh, are integers, they could be negative integers. If this is a perfect eighth power, it means 8 must divide alpha j for every j. And if it is also a perfect eight, uh, 16th power, which would be the next step, it would mean 16 divides alpha j for every j. And of course, the exponents cannot be divisible by every single power of 2 unless they're all 0, which means f of x is equal to 1. Okay, so now um, I need to prove, so what we need to prove is this. We need to show that f of 1 is 1. If we show f of 1 is 1, then we are done. Okay, so let's take uh, what we had, the original functional equation. Let me rewrite it. So f of x squared, f of y squared is equal to f of x squared f of y. And I'm going to substitute x and y equals 1 to see what I get. So I would get f of f of 1 squared equals f of 1 cubed. And this is obtained by substituting x and y equals 1. Okay, so that's what I get. Now, I had to play with this and see what I can get. But one thing that is not very difficult to think of is to substitute um, y by f of 1 squared. Because now I know f of f of 1 squared. So why not just substitute maybe x by 1 and y by f of 1 squared because I actually know how to evaluate that to see what we get. Sometimes you'll just have to try and see what works. So we'll substitute that and on the other side we will get f of 1 squared. I substitute x by 1 and then f of f of 1 squared on this side. Okay, so this is going to be f of, okay, I know f of f of 1 squared, we, well, we already evaluated that up there, so that's f of 1 cubed, and then to the power of 2, that's f of 1 to the power of 6 is equal to f of 1 squared times, f of f of 1 squared is f of 1 cubed, so this is f of 1 to the power of 5. Okay, so we got f of f of 1 to the power of 6 is equal to f of 1 to the power of 5. Now, we're going to do um, evaluation of f of f of 1 to the power of 6 in a different way. We'll substitute x by f of 1 squared and y by 1. And if we do that, then we're going to get f of f of 1 to the power of 4, f of 1 squared, which is why we get f of 1 to the power of 6, is equal to f of f of 1 squared squared times f of 1. So this is x squared, this is f of y squared, this is f of x squared, and this is f of y. So this gives us f of f of 1 to the power of 6 is equal to f of f of 1 squared is f of 1 to the power of 3rd, so that's f of 1, 1 to the power of 6 times f of 1, which is f of 1 to the power of 7. Now these two are the same, so that tells us f of 1 is 
1 in fact because f of 1 to the power of 5th is the same as f of 1 to the power of 7th which means f of 1 is 1 and once you get f of 1 equals 1 then you can make the argument that we made earlier so if you were to write down the solution you'll have to write down that portion at the end so if you like this video make sure you subscribe to the channel and watch the rest of the videos on my channel I have a lot of videos like this going through methods of problem solving and I will see you in the next video.